captivated by his motto, if not now, when? And if not me, who? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome tonight's keynote speaker, founder and CEO of Not Impossible Labs, Mick Eberle. I can't stand the concept of no. Everything that we do at Not Impossible Labs is about hacking and modding and breaking and cracking and coding and turning something that we've had, something that's technological, into something that actually pushes humanity forward. So my process is you commit, then you figure out how the heck you're gonna pull it off. The story that I'm probably most passionate about uh, that I wanna tell you about is the story of Tempt. Tempt in the 80s and 90s was one of the foremost graffiti artists or street artists in the LA area. And he came home from a run one day and said, Dad, my legs are tingling. And that was the onset of ALS. There was no reason why someone in this day of age who was as talented as Temp was not able to communicate or express himself or do his art. I had no clue what I was gonna do, but I had to do something. I never said the words ocular recognition technology consecutively in a sentence. And now we've created a device that has absolutely no limitation. There's no insurance company that can say no. There's no hospital that can say no. Anybody who's paralyzed now has access to actually draw or communicate using only their eyes. And then we, in a quote, woke up the next day. It's top 50 inventions of 2010. Gizmodo called it eight incredible health inventions that transform lives. It's now part of the permanent collection at the MoMA. Like we just decided to help this one person, and all of a sudden this thing just started snowballing. So July 11th, 2013, I go out to dinner with a friend of mine, and he tells me about this guy. This guy's named Dr. Tom Katana. He hates the fact that he has to do amputations in this area because it's a war-torn area. This story goes on to say about a young boy named Daniel son of a farming family, and he was out tending his cows, and a bomb came over from overhead. He went and he wrapped his arms around a tree, and when the bomb went off, the tree protected his body, but it blew his arms off. There's all these rules, so we're constantly conditioned of what we can and can't do. You can go ahead and hop on a plane and go figure out how to 3D print something and then go print something for a boy who lost his arms. There's just ramifications to it, and you have to weigh out, you know, what ramifications are you willing to deal with. In helping Daniel and teaching his village how to make arms, when I left, that's when the arms started to be made. So what we're up to at Not Impossible Labs is around this concept of help one, help many. The story of Daniel was a story about one person. But the thing is, is if I ask you guys, hey, let's go cure poverty, let's go cure hunger, who want, who's in that? Who wants to do that? You'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But if I say, let's go feed Jim, he's hungry outside, and won't get him a sandwich, you're like, okay, let's do it, we can do something. So our whole philosophy about is that helping one person is what leads to helping many people. You guys are so brilliant. I am in awe of your brilliance. Take what you have and do good for the world. Do something that's gonna make the world a better place. You guys are this legion of just brilliant minds that have the potential to change the world. You're already changing the world. Use it for good. As we build this community, as we build this population, we'll be able to start to see the types of things that we can change as a community. We are the global brain, and we have the potential to change the world in front of us. Thank you.